tad more and then just form kind of a semicircle, that would be awesome. All right, I think we're about ready to get started. So I have three acorns, I need some help. So can I have three volunteers? Just raise your hand if you're willing to help us out here. So I'd like you, one, two, three, to hide this in this area the best you can so nobody else can find it. So do your best to bury it or hide it. Hide that thing as best you can. So just anywhere around here. Just take a few seconds and see how well you can just make it invisible. Throw it in the pond. <laughs> All right, are we good? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, how many of you enjoy a good road trip every once in a while? Cross country, yep. cross state. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they're pretty fun. So do you ever find that those semi trucks are somewhat annoying just trying to you get anyone behind them or they're always kind of, you know, covering up the tracks and just in the way? Anybody get annoyed with the truckers out there? I know they have to do their job and they serve a really important purpose, but they can be annoying at times. Today we're going to talk a little bit about nature's truckers and some that form some really good relationships with plants and different organisms that might exist here at Schmickley or in your own backyard. And so we're happy to have you here today to uh, discover a little bit more about how our nature's truckers can help transport seeds that can't maybe do that on their own and just help them to continue their life cycle successfully, but they do it in some really amazing strategic ways. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. So, I am Brenda, and we are gonna to be together for about 15 minutes. And the surface that we're gonna be walking on is fairly flat, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And so I think we'll be in pretty good shape that way as well, okay? So we want to get trucking, but before we do, want to give you a hint about where our first stop might be and what our first nature tracker is going to be or trucker is going to be about. So take one of these and pass it along and see if you can come up with what our first nature trucker is all about. Now I'll ask you to enjoy this along the way between here and our first stop, but definitely careful of that trash. We don't want to trash the roadways of Schmickley's Trail, so make sure you keep that to yourself and put it in your pocket, okay? So enjoy a little treat as we're walking to our very first stop today. And I heard from a few of you that you've been here to Schmickley before, so I hope that uh, if you're a return visitor that you enjoy your visit today and learn a little bit more that maybe you hadn't realized before. And so uh, we hope to uh, enjoy the perfect day that we have today and uh, just see a few more examples of what's out there in, uh, in Schmickley. So what I'll ask is that if each of you could just kind of follow in a line behind me and we'll head on to our first stop. How you doing? Got a few more? All right. Hi, Emma. Hi, Emma. Can you hand in my <laughs> I mean, you can, because you really would judge me. It's just like the first time that we do three things. It's like I'm not actually doing it. I'm just going to do we are at actually a really cool location within Schmickley Reserve because this whole area has been recently restored removal of a lot of the invasives like Phragmites and replaced with a lot of cool plants that are more native to the area and so we have a lot of you know plants that should be here and removal of some that shouldn't but what I'd like you to do is kind of look behind you can you see any of the flowers that are still here lingering on in fall? We have a cardinal flower, we have black-eyed Susans, and some other flower species. Any guess what our first nature trucker might be based on my earlier hint? A bumblebee. All right, so we have bees all over Schmickley, as you can expect, and they're here really 
busily helping our plants like the flowers, right, to do a job called pollination. And so we have, you know, flowers as one example of a plant that can't just disperse its own and reproduce, reproduce its own by itself, so it relies on insects like bees. So there's a real mutualistic relationship. So bees need to get the nectar uh, and pollen from flowers to then be able to pollinate and reproduce, in the, which helps their, those flower species. So that beneficial relationship is what's really critical. But exactly how does that work? I do need three volunteers. So if three folks could just step on up, I'm gonna have you help me out with something here. All right. Can you just hold on to this for a second? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. You two get to be flowers. So take your best flower pose, if you would. Yep. You can be here. <laughs> if you'll step forward just a tad, Mason. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Lovely. So if we're looking at the parts of flowers. We know that what the bees will do, and I have to get my bee costume on here, what the bees will have to do is look for these great flowers that have these awesome uh, pistils that are part of the flower. And what they're actually doing is buzzing around, looking to get that nectar. And in the process of getting that nectar, they actually pull out the pollen, she goes pollen by the way, and then they're flying around looking to get some more nectar and they find other flowers and so they actually will drop the pollen on the stamens of another flower. You know, it's just on their body. The pollen is just collecting, right? So when they actually go to get nectar and other flowers, they're just in the, in the uh, addition, also putting that pollen and leaving that for pollination to occur. And so the uh, parts of the flower, you know, become really critical in this, in this whole situation. And so if you want to eat your Cheeto pollen, you're welcome to it. It's totally easy, you know. It hasn't been touched by anybody else except for the bee. <laughs> but this is how the process works. And so we can understand a little bit better about why these flowers benefit. So thanks to our volunteers. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> OK. So as we move on and think about other natural truckers, you know, insects play a super huge role. But if we're thinking about our next natural trucker, Let's uh, see if we can get a hint here about what that might be. For those of you uh, Bob Dylan fans, or Peter, Paul, and Mary, see if that provides us a good enough hint sure as does. to what our next natural tractor will be. So if you could follow me, I'm going to step this way. Yeah, I was going to do pollination. I thought you were doing credit. I was I honestly don't know I'm putting this like I think that was the last time I went to the Like a few days after Another type of a nature trucker that we might find here. The wind. A bird. All of those are true, yes. But we like to talk about what disperses things like our lovely milkweed plants that we see all throughout Schneekly. 
and probably you have them in your backyard or close by too. So milkweed, really important plant that does rely on other forms of dispersion and so wind is a, is a huge part of that. And so I don't even need anybody to help me with this today to be my wind because it's, it's doing it pretty well on its own. But you can see how the parachute type uh, seeds of the milkweed pod, it just helps them to float around and hopefully get in all kinds of directions to where they have a better chance of getting dispersed once they land on the soil, hopefully germinating. And so, kind of an important piece for us to keep in mind is that we can help this plant as well. Um, why would we want to help the milkweed plant maybe more? Is there any other species that benefit also from milkweeds that we were maybe interested in? Say again? The monarch butterfly. So they do rely on the milkweed quite a bit. And so if we can help out by planting more milkweed seeds, that will be great too. So we can also be uh, a trucker for, for these plants as well and transport. Thing is about when you're looking at the milkweed pod, because right now is getting close to the perfect time for us to help these guys out. And so as they're about ready to really pop open, that's the point when you're really waiting for it, so that the seeds are especially dark in color. But if you can help out by taking off all the fluff and then having just the seeds, they should be at this brown stage. But if you can then take the seeds and then disperse them out there, that would be the best. So trying to get out, rid of the fluff is what uh, research tells us to do to help make it more chance of the germination process helping. So, be looking out for the pods at this stage of the year and see if you can maybe help with dispersing some of those seeds as well to help out monarchs, but also, of course, the milkweed plant. So, very common plant that we see. So, another one that we can be thinking about is another organism, anyway, is the giant puffball that does rely on the wind as well. So, there's lots of different species that rely on it. This one has been pretty beat up, it's been right over here. Um, they start opening up this time of the year and then their spores just get filled out or pulled up and, and go blowing in the wind as well. Trillions of spores can be inside a giant puffball. But what are the chances of them actually germinating? You know, it's kind of like the uh, horse track sweepstakes or if you, you know, do the lottery. Chances are very slim. It's very hard for those spores to actually find a spot for actual germination. But they certainly have a lot of chances to with all the spores that belong inside of them. And the wind can help uh, disperse those spores as well. And so even other organisms like giant puffball can benefit from the nature tracker of wind and dispersing through wind, okay? So what I'd like to talk about next and moving on, do you think that you and I and our dogs or deer can help disperse and be a nature tracker as well? So think about what and how you might do that um, here in Schmickley or in your own backyard. So follow me to the next stop if you would. Watch out for this low-lying branch if you would. It's uh, hard on those who have a tall stature. <laughs> Not me, but you. <laughs> are just really mangled and I don't know if squirrels got to them or if people started playing with them but there's lots of chunks of giant puffballs so something's been helping to distribute those spores but they're all around in this area too so we'll continue on. Just go a little bit further, maybe even curve around here, and then just form a big portion around here. That would be great. So, anybody have any guesses about how we might also help? Oh yeah. 
Oh, my oh. oh, look at that. That sock is junk. Anybody ever felt like that after walking through the woods? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the Virginia stickweed is a doozy of a sticker, that is for sure. And it is, you know, talk about a strategy for being transported effectively. This one has it figured out because it sticks tightly and you spread it all over the place, right? So you and I help, our dogs help, deer, other mammals, all the time. And so we want to think about species like this that grow really commonly, you know, on the edge of fields, on the edge of trails, maybe in your own backyard. So just being aware of how you're transporting it if you choose to transport it. But anybody have any tricks for how you remove all those nice sticky burrs? Trash. Trash can, throw the sock away. Brush them off. Brush them off. The key is where do you put them after you brush them off? <laughs> so if I just brush them off in my backyard, I'm going to see that plant again next year. So toilet, you know, flushing them down is fine, or the trash can if you don't want them around in your yard. So again, they are very persistent. And so this is one example of a plant that definitely can use our you know, uses our help whenever it, it can. Can you think of another plant that might do something similar? Burdock. Burdock, okay. So burdock grows in this area too and probably grows like in farm fields that you've seen or pasture areas. I want you to kind of take a close-up look of that and see the structure of the, the burdock and the barbules that you see on, you can see as you look at those barbules why it sticks to us, to our dogs, to deer so effectively, right? Because those are just like little hooks that latch on, okay? So, what was the connection to that? Did you say something? I already heard it. So, we, there was a Swiss engineer who actually modeled off of this plant to design Velcro, right? And so when he found these in his dog, it gave him the idea to create a product that we now know as Velcro based on the design of a plant. So if you're interested in biomimicry, this is a good example of that in play. And uh, you might want to dig into that a little bit more uh, as well. So we have lots of these kinds of plants around that we can help <coughs> them transport their seeds as well. Okay, so at the beginning of our program, we had a few human squirrels helping us out. You think you could find those acorns again? All right, I bet you could. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right, well, our final stop will be kind of addressing uh, that next type of a uh, nature trucker. So we'll lead you to the final stop up here. all over the place and so this has been a pretty good year for acorn production and uh, it's a good thing for our, our tree species because that's going to help with reforestation 
So again, they can't disperse their seeds, but they'll certainly rely on our squirrels and perhaps chipmunks to help with that effort, right? So how successful do you think our squirrels are at, you know, this time of the year, they're out burying all their acorns for the winter and developing a cache. So how successful do you think they are at remembering where they are after? Blind squirrel gets a nut every once in a while. Every once in a while, all right? <laughs> 80%. You know, they're not quite that good. They're not quite that good. There's way too many trees around here. 65%. But, but they are fairly successful in that they have this spatial environmental uh, map like almost in their mind. So when they are caching those acorns this time of the year, they're able to go and relocate those more than, you know, 50% of the time is often the case. And so we know that Somehow, as many acorns as they're bearing around here, they're actually they're actually finding them pretty often. But for those times that they don't find them, the oak trees are really helped by being able to spread and reproduce and, and start another forest in the area. So we do rely on those types of critters as well for reforesting and spreading our, our seeds like acorns. So as we've been kind of wandering through Schmeekly today, we're, we're discovering that if you're on a road trip, you know, those are always fun. And uh, we know that truckers can be useful, especially in nature in this case. And I want you to think about uh, how you rely on others for different things. Um, you know, it could be all kinds of different topics and things that you rely on people for. But our species of plants in Schmeekly Reserve and perhaps in your backyard definitely <laughs> rely on several things to help them reproduce and often cases that's uh, kind of an amazing strategy that they use. And so keep a lookout for maybe other examples of nature's truckers as you're going around in the fall and uh, see if you can spot some more examples of that. But I hope uh, that you've gotten a little bit more out of this program today and I hope you have a good afternoon. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, can we go back to the amphitheater and we're going to chat just for a few All minutes, right. okay? So just head back in that direction.